Hi, welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. As you can see, not in the uh, studio today, but out and about. I'm actually in Bournemouth at the moment, um, and uh, it's quite a sort of mixed day. Um, but uh, down here, it's a bank holiday weekend, of course, in the UK, so I yeah, can't work every day, can I? Or can I? I'm working right now, and I time to give you the transfer updates and uh, one of the biggest stories going around at the moment is Arsenal's link to Emil Forsberg. Now, spoken about it a couple of days ago on Transfer Daily and uh, this is still hotting up. Emil Forsberg, rumours, of course, a very talented uh, winger, plays for RB Leipzig, has had a couple of great seasons for them. 26, experienced player and the Swedish publication Expressen today is claiming that Arsenal are ready to table a £50 million bid for Emil Forsberg. And um, if that's true, that'd be great. Of course, I think uh, we all know at Arsenal that that's one of the areas that Arsenal could do with strengthening. It's one of the areas that's traditionally been pretty strong, but um, recently, you know, I, I think, you know, especially since Alexis Sanchez left, we could do with somebody particularly over on that left-hand side. Welbeck's playing there at the moment a lot of times. Sometimes Aubameyang's been shifted out there, but no real sort of real expert that could play out uh, as an out-and-out -out winger. And this guy Forsberg can play there. He can also play centrally as well. He's a very um, flexible player and it would represent a good signing. However, £50 million. Now, have Arsenal got that to spend? We've been hearing um, since the start of the transfer window that Arsenal have a budget of £50 million. So, basically, if they were tabling a bid for £50 million, that would mean that basically the budget's gone. However, there's other ways of doing it or another ways of looking at it. You could be looking at it and saying, well, all right, the initial £50 million, or actually... Recently, over the past few days, we've been told it's not even actually 50 million. It could be up to 70 million. And uh, um, Stan Kroenke has agreed to release a tw another 20 million pounds. So it's an actual 70 million budget. But looking on it as well, you can look on it and say to yourself, there's other ways in which money can be released for transfers. And that is by selling players. And maybe if Arsenal are looking to bring in uh, Emil Forsberg... It could be that Danny Welbeck, for instance, could be on his way out of the club and some of those funds would go towards the signing of Emil Forsberg. Um, would that be popular, though? I mean, I don't know. It's a bit indifferent with Danny Welbeck. You know, he's a bit of a fan's favourite, but fans then also recognise that he's not the most clinical player in the club. And there have been fans that I've spoken to who said, ah, oh, you know what I mean? move Welbeck on and bring him better. But then I look at a player like Danny Welbeck and I say, he's your perfect squad player. Perfect squad player. If you think about it, we've got two strikers at the moment and everybody will be looking at it and saying, well, we've got loads of strikers. We've got Lacazette, we've got Aubameyang. But we've seen with Arsenal's injuries over the years, it only takes a couple of knocks and we've got problems. Now, Danny Welbeck, having him there in your squad means that you've got a guy that can play striker if those two were to get injured, and a guy that can go out wide, basically a guy that's flexible, a guy that can play anywhere across that front three. So, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be overly keen on selling Danny Welbeck, but Danny Welbeck's contract is starting to, to run down. Um, he'll be looking for a new deal. Should we just be going for better, or do we say to ourselves we should be retaining a player like Danny Welbeck as a, as a squad player. Um, really be interested to find out from you guys what you think. Um, here comes another one of our famous polls. Let's do a poll on it. Keep Danny Welbeck or sell Danny Welbeck? Because um, I think if, you know, if, you, if we're looking at these sort of people like Emil Forsbergs or looking at loan deals for Dembele from um, Barcelona, undoubtedly we're going to have to sell um, somebody. Um, and it could be Welbeck, could be one of those. I mean, we, you can also look at it and say there's guys like Mustafi that could be moved on as well. Um, but I don't know. I'm going to ask about the Welbeck situation. Do you think, you know, get the cash for Welbeck and get somebody better? Or do you look on it and say to yourself, Danny Welbeck can be a very important squad player 
um, and that we should be retaining his services. I'd really like to hear from you. The Stefan Lichtensteiner one is uh, seemingly getting very close. Um, again, um, it's being reported today that um, it could be announced this week, the signing of Lichtensteiner. Of course, um, we were one of the first people to tell you, if you looked on our Twitter account, I think we were the first. Um, got a little heads up from Turkish, and he said that um, you know Lichtensteiner was uh, down at the training ground, um, being a shown around. That was before it broke with everybody else, and, it, and he was right. And um, Lichtensteiner was being shown around the ground, and um, lots of publications saying that that deal may be announced this week that Lichtensteiner will be joining Arsenal. I've, I've said before, Lichtensteiner, I think, and um, from what I've read in the comments, the majority of you guys think that it would be a good signing for Arsenal, even though he's 34. But it's what he brings in experience, it's what's, what he brings in providing um, backup um, to Hector Bellerin. And I think this guy's still ambitious to play. Um, if you read some of his recent comments, he said, uh, listen, he goes, I could go and play in China and get loads and loads of money, but money's not important to me. I want to be playing. I want to be playing at the highest level. I still think I've got a lot to give. He's going to be at the World Cup and uh, Liechtensteiner could possibly be um, a signing that could be unveiled this week um, at the Emirates. Another guy that... Um, He's been heavily linked over the past couple of weeks, ever since the transfer window opened, and has openly admitted now today that um, Arsenal are talking to him. And that's Kaglar Siyanku, um from Freiburg, Turkish international, plays at centre-back. He's had a lot of great reviews over there in the Bundesliga. Yet another Bundesliga player, by the way. As I said the other day, Sven Mislintat seems to be going really Bundesliga heavy. Um, but he confirmed to the media over there in Turkey that Arsenal are talking to him. And these are his quotes. He said, Arsenal are one of the most important clubs in England. I know they're interested in me, but nothing has been finalised yet about my trainer. After the national team camp, we will have talks. So he's saying there that he's going to be talking to Arsenal. Um, I also saw a recent quote from him where he was uh, talking up Atletico Madrid as well and saying that it's a club he'd love to play for. That's another team that he's been heavily linked to. Um, that's a good sign actually. If Atletico Madrid are interested in him, he must be a decent defender because you know when it comes to defence, as we found out when we played Atletico Madrid, they're absolutely brilliant. If we could defend like that, it'd be fantastic. But apparently they're interested in him. Of course, they can offer Champions League football. We can't. Um, but... Um, Arsenal, very interested in this guy, another Bundesliga player, uh, of course played for Freiburg. Freiburg didn't exactly set the Bundesliga alight last season, but this guy individually had some really good reviews. As I said, Turkish international, still a very young player. Could he as well be another signing that's going to be coming in through the door at Arsenal? Another mislintat identified guy. As is the next person we're going to talk about, Socrates. Uh, Socrates, again linked heavily, has been the first person right, really, really heavily linked since the window opened. And uh, the German publication Kicker is saying that Borussia Dortmund have now named their price to Arsenal. They've told Arsenal exactly how much they want. And that is 18 million euros. That's what they want for him. Socrates has only got a year left on his deal. Um, Arsenal apparently are willing to offer 15 million euros. So that's under the amount that um, Borussia Dortmund are looking for him. Surely they can come to some sort of uh, common ground. This is this regular stuff that happens in transfer dealings. And uh, Socrates probably become Arsenal's first signing of the summer. Lots of people saying as early as this week that could be announced. Again, let's wait and see what happens with that one. But Socrates, Borussia Dortmund wanting 18 million euros for him. Arsenal offering 15 million. Let's see what happens if they can meet um, a common ground on that one. Linked to another player from where? You guessed it, the Bundesliga. <laughs> Again, he goes by the name of Joshua uh, Vanganom. Vanganoman. I hope I pronounced that right. Probably not, knowing me. Um, 17 years of age, plays for Hamburg. Um, actually, only played one game for Hamburg, and that was a 6-0 thrashing that they got in the hands of uh, Bayern Munich. So, not really able to gauge much about him. Hamburg, of course, 
Bundesliga team that were relegated. So again, that's not great. But he's more one for the future, this guy. 70 years of age, plays at left back, can also play at right back as well. Um, he's a German youth international and um, he's been identified by, obviously, by Misslin Tat. This is another Misslin Tat guy. Um, as a player that could come in and develop um, and, you know, push for that left back position, which, you know, you look at the left back position and Nacho Monreal, brilliant season in the Spanish squad, but he's getting on a bit. Um, you know, he's, he's, what, 31 now, 32 Nacho. So, you know, we need a younger player that's going to come in in that position. Um, of course, you've got Kalasinac there, had a bit of an indifferent season, started well, dropped off, did all right towards the end of the season. Hopefully, we're still yet to see the best of him. But, yeah, it was bringing in a left back. I, I can see I can see the uh, sense in that if it's a young player um, and maybe he's sending him out on loan again to, you know, um, sort of get get himself right up to speed but um link to this guy today from the Bundesliga and as I said that the, the influence of um, Sven Mislintat on Arsenal's transfers policies at the moment can be seen by practically every well obviously he's the head of recruitment so obviously gonna have influences but can be seen on the amount of German players that he's looking to bring in or players that are coming from the Bundesliga he obviously knows it inside out and he's obviously looking to bring in players from there, um, talent from there, that he knows that can come and develop in England. Whether that's going to be enough for Arsenal right now, I don't know. We could do with a couple of established players. But, you know, look at the players that I've named out today. Um, practically every one of them. Socrates, Sayunku, this guy here, um, Emil Forsberg, all of them. Bundesliga players so um, you can see where we're looking heavily as I said a couple of days ago it used to be all French now it seems to be going all German which ain't a bad thing they did win the World Cup so they can't be all bad um, one guy that I still can't understand how comes we haven't been getting linked to more and I haven't heard a lot of movement on this and again when I look at that winger position especially out on the left hand side this guy would be perfect and that's Julian Draxler now wouldn't be cheap obviously but wouldn't be as expensive as, as it normally would be. Um, he's having a really tough time at the moment in PSG because obviously Neymar's there. So to get into that starting lineup with their front three of Mbappe, Neymar, you know, Edison Cavani, is, you know, it's really, really difficult for him. There's also Di Maria there and people like that. Why not Arsenal try and make a bid for a Julian Draxler? I think that's a guy that would really, really strengthen the team. If we were to do it, he'd probably have to do it before the World Cup because, you know, he's going to be in the World Cup and, you know, if he does well in that, his price will go right up. But I'm kind of surprised that Arsenal are not looking at a Julian Draxler. More teams, actually. Maybe he doesn't want to leave. But for me, that looks like a guy that, you know, is there and could be brought in. And I think Julian Draxler would be excellent um, in the Premier League. I, 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 I could see him being a similar type of player who could operate in a similar type of way to what Sane does at Manchester City. And I'd love Arsenal to make a bid for him, but listen, um, what do I know? Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> you know what, I mean? what influence do I have? He's from the, he's German, isn't he? So why not? <laughs> but who knows? Um, listen, thanks for watching the show today. Don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow. Um, don't forget to subscribe to Arsenal Fan TV. As I've been saying every day, we're going to be doing um, lots of stuff around the World Cup as the World Cup is coming very close. On the 14th of June, the World Cup starts. So if you want to get involved in any of that chat, make sure you keep it locked here on AFTV. We'll be also scanning all those teams in the World Cup on Transfer Daily to just see you know, if there's any talent there that Arsenal can go out there and grab. Thanks for watching and we'll be back tomorrow.